Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to play Swing Gitan. <laughs> This is a tune very much in the gypsy jazz repertoire. Uh, quite a few of the tunes that are played in gypsy jazz are actually uh, normal swing tunes, but this is very definitely one that uh, anyone outside of gypsy jazz wouldn't know at all. Um, originally known as Stefan Stomp, and it was composed by André de Gien. Uh, I'm going to show you the basic melody and uh, some ideas about how to improvise over it. So I'll play through the, the melody. Um, the first time, we'll, the first half, yeah, we're going to do in a lower octave, and the second half in the upper octave. We're in the key of G minor. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So it's a fairly straightforward melody. I'll just run through it again and show you a bit of the fingering because I'm doing quite a lot in third position. Uh, so you could play the first um, couple of bars, third position, sliding up to the second finger, and staying in third position for the that B flat. Still in third position, sliding your first finger down and then back up again. second finger for that A, and then down to first position, and I'm sliding up and then straight down again, then we're going down to an A flat, sliding up again, For, do, for all this uh, third position stuff, which is not absolutely necessary, is in order to get a nice vibrato and those nice slides. And um, the, the kind of dark tone that you get low down on the violin really suits this kind of gypsy jazz tune. Now we're going up the octave, starting in first position. Here I'm using my second finger and then putting the first finger next to it. Second finger. And then uh, fourth finger for the A flat. Let's do all that with the backing. swing and that's because there are no eighth notes or quavers so we're gonna to have to break up some of those longer notes into shorter notes and you've got a lot of freedom as to exactly how you do that um, you might do something like this So that 
is uh, swing mixed with syncopation. So the, the syncopation is where the accent comes in an unexpected place uh, because basically a starting a phrase a half a beat late or half a beat early. Uh, going to the second half. <laughs> So that adds a lot of variety and a lot of a lot more excitement to the tune. Let's do that again, same tempo, but this time with that swing. soloing on this, uh, it's not the easiest of tunes, basically you do have to follow the chords fairly carefully. Um, so it's in G minor, it's in G minor, so you've got, you've got a lot of G minor and you've got a lot of A7 and you have a surprise A flat which we have to deal with. Um, the Maybe the best way to start on this is just to work on the arpeggios. So something like this. So that was the arpeggios, but kind of dressed up a bit. Um, the one chord you might be unfamiliar with, A minor 7 flat 5. Basically, an A minor 7 is like that, and uh, flattening, flattening the 5 gives you that. Or um, the rest of the chords are pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you some substitutions in a minute. But let's go through that again, um, same tempo, and I will just work around those arpeggios. So it's, it's not very inspiring doing that, but it does give you a very clear idea of where the chords are, what the chords are. And I've got a video coming up um, fairly shortly on um, the arpeggios, the shapes of the, these different chords, which you might find helpful. Another way to approach uh, at least some of the solo is to follow the descending line, which is implied by the chords. So we've got this line... <laughs> that as the like the, the skeleton of your solo. Let me show you how that would work. I'm going to speed it up now.
So that gives you something to hang it around. Let me show you something about the uh, substitutions you can do for the A7 and for the A minor 7 flat 5. So instead of playing A7, you can play um, a G diminished. If you're not familiar with the diminished then you do need to learn the fingering because it's not straightforward as to how to finger this. Uh, I've written the fingering above, just going up down that arpeggio. So that will go very nicely for the A7 and gives it a much darker, more gypsy type feel. And when you come to the A minor 7 flat 5 and the D7 you can do a A diminished and that would be like this. And this is something that the, the guitarist might well do as well. Um, but it's not something you have to agree on uh, because the two chords just work, they just fit in together. So let me show you um, medium tempo um, improvising using those diminished. There are some really good recorded versions of this on YouTube and uh, my favourite is Jason Anik. Uh, he always does a, a very nice solo on these kind of things. And uh, if you look at his version, he plays it pretty steady, but it's absolutely packed with very interesting and clean and thought out licks. And uh, I've purloined one of his. And what he does is he emphasises on the G minor, the 6th and the ninth. So, um, the 6th of G minor is an E, so he emphasises that note, and the 9th is an A. So he's got this phrase. And he manages to carry that forward into the A7 chord, which shows he's thought about this. So that's a beautiful lick. Uh, I haven't got it completely up to speed yet, but that's well worth following. And uh, the other one that you've definitely got to watch is the uh, the live version with uh, Angelo de Bar, Birelli Legren, and on violin uh, Florin Nicolescu, who is just one of the best, and he does a great lick. Um, the first four chords he plays in E all the way through it and they incidentally take it at a real breakneck speed. Let me show you what that sounds like with those E's. When it comes to the A flat 7 chord, um, that is definitely the one that if you're not expecting it, it's going to trip you up. So what I normally do, and what is very uh, dull and predictable, is to something like that, starting on the A flat. Um, so either a low A flat or a um, higher A flat. But if you can avoid always starting on the root, then do because um, being a kind of standout chord. It's a good idea to have something uh, a little bit different to do each time you come to that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. I'm going to play you out with twice round. And if you'd like a copy of the dots, then do subscribe and send me an email. And I'll see you again soon.